Right, let's talk about V-Ray Fog. Let's try and get rid of some of the confusion on this, and let's clear up how you can use this in your scenes. So, first of all, I've just looked at the Fog Multiplier, okay? And that's all I've changed here. So, I have this material here, and this one here on the end has this material. And this has this color blue on it, fairly light, and the Fog Multiplier is set to 0 0.01. The next one has a fog multiplier of 0 0.1, and the same all the way along it goes up by 0 0.1. So the next is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way to 1.0. And this is this is 1.0 here. So with fog, obviously what you have is you have where the where the model is thin, it comes through very light, and as it gets thicker, it gets darker. And if you just use multiplier, you can you know adjust this amount depending on how thick the glass is. And that's all this shows. Now bias, which is your option, that's really all you have to change. If I bring up the material editor, you know, and you look here, you've got the fog color, the fog multiplier, and the bias. Now that's it. So, but in addition, one other thing which you have here is you can put maps now in fog color. Now in V-Ray 3.4, I'm not sure about V-Ray 3.5, you couldn't put maps in here. But now you can put bitmaps in there, you can put, uh, procedural maps in there you can put all kinds of different colors in there whatever color you want whatever map you want you can put it in there and now it will apply correctly uh, in the scene and that's quite a massive change you know and that can make quite a big difference um, but right now I'm just going to cover this multiplier and the bias now this bias figure this can go negative or positive so the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the positive bias and what that does I'm just going to change the layers Here's my layers, and bring up positive bias. Okay, so that's got a fog bias of 0, 0.0 and a multiplier of 0 0.01. The next one has a multiplier of 1 and a fog bias of 0 0.1. The next has a fog bias of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. All of this multiplier stays at 1 all the way until it gets to a fog bias of 1.0. So we're just going up here in tiny increments of 0.1 each time. Now, what this does in the render is it actually, like this lightness here, the top bit here, this will stay the same. So there's the same amount of light coming through here as there is coming through here. There's the same amount of color in the scene here. But what it's doing is it's stretching out this bit here. As that fog bias goes up, it, as it, the, as the, the model becomes thicker, it doesn't change so drastically. The color changes less drastically. And so what you have here is you have like about that much, but stretched over the entire object. And that's what you're seeing. That's why this gradient is changing. It's just, it takes more for it to become darker. So basically you can reduce, by going into positive, you can reduce that fog bias effect if that's what you need to do. Okay, now let's look at the bias minus. So, bias minus, just like this. Material editor. All right, so the bias minus, I went from zero all the way down to minus 1.0. Again, down by 0.1 every time. And if we bring up the, the file we have this so now we have it reversed it's just as it goes more and more minus it's increasing the effect so as it gets thicker it dramatically becomes darker and darker and darker and darker and darker but this top bit here for example that stays the same and this bit here is like you know this amount here now but just kind of gradually shrunk down until it just hits this tiny bit here so a minus bias increases the amount from light to dark. Now, often what you will do is, because you don't want it necessarily to be this dark, is you will then adjust uh, the multiplier. So in the next example here, I've got the multiplier adjusted, and hopefully this helps us see the effect here of the minus and positive bias. So here I've got a multiplier at 15 and a bias at plus 5. And that's this one here. So I've had it set at that high, the multiplier, in order to have 
the blue coming through because with that bias set at five, it's just coming out white unless I set this multiplier super high. The next one is set at 12 and four and we get a similar result, but you can see there's slightly more variation up here, just a tiny amount. Next is three and a multiplier at nine. That's this one. And again, you can see more light coming through up here now. This is bias two, multiplier seven. And again, you're gradually getting more and more light coming in. Bias one, multiplier five. And then bias zero, multiplier one. And that's this one here right in the middle. So this is just, you know, standard fog. All right. This is bias minus one, multiplier 0 0.04. And again, now you can drastically see that difference. Bias minus two, multiply as 0 0.001. And then after this, the multiplier goes to 0 0.001, but it only shows it here as 0, 0.0 because it's so small. This fog bias is minus three and the next minus four and the next minus five. But the multiplier now is 0 0.001. And that's what you're getting here with this. So here you've got it drastically, you know, that variation is happening so quick in such a small area. And yet here up at five, it's like so, takes so long for that variation to occur. It would need to be so big. But having said that, you know, if you've got fog on something like the sea, and maybe you're hundreds of meters deep, you know, you, you gotta think, well, what is that? How much do you want? What, what settings do you want here on the fog? So I think large numbers minus and large numbers positive, will definitely have a use. Uh, not necessarily like on a wine glass <laughs> or something simple like that, but they definitely do have a use. And just to summarize, going back into 3ds Max, um, the multiplier here, this affects how dark it is, how dark the, the, the fog is on the model which you're doing, and the bias affects how quickly that variation is from light to dark. But really, you're only going to know uh, what these settings are by tests. And I believe this is set on the units of the scene. So, you know, if you've got a, something which renders perfectly with fog in, in a scene in millimeters, if you bring that scene into centimeters, it's not necessarily going to work properly. So you might now have to, you know, add in an extra zero or change this. And same if you're working in inches or feet, the likelihood of it working incorrectly is definitely there. So you're going to have to just bring it in. And as you adjust the bias, do your test renders and make sure it's coming out how you want it to come out.